Guys, the chickens here. We're back today with another home gym video. In today's video, what I thought we were kind of due for and that we haven't done in a while is a bit of a home gym tour for 2022. So what I want to do with this is show you uh, the gym space, talk about everything a little bit. Um, I definitely want to focus on the rack because I noticed a lot of you have been asking questions about half racks and ceiling heights and that kind of thing. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to touch on some of the accessory stuff. Uh, some of the things that I haven't talked about maybe that I have here and why I have it and if I like it, if it's good, if it's not. And uh, most importantly, future plans, some pieces I've got my eye on once we get some uh, money coming in because it is tight right now. But uh, that's not going to stop us. So let's go ahead and um, let's bring the camera way over here and let's take a step back for a second and show you guys the main piece first. Um, so first we start off here. This is a half rack. Now, if you'll notice, the ceiling height in here, this is actually my basement, right? So the floor joists run about 72 inches off the ground in some spots. Some spots, they're 75. It's all totally uneven, but um, more or less six feet of, of space to work with. So you'll see right here, my half rack size is pretty well, pretty well just a, uh, a couple inches. So this is a 72 inch post. And it gives me, I don't know, three inches or so, two and a half inches um, from being jammed into the ceiling. So what I've actually done here is since I didn't have the space um, or the floor print for a, for a full rack, um, I still wanted to, <clears throat> you know, have a rack like setup, be able to use some accessories and that kind of thing. So what I did was I bought the SML1 from Rogue, which is this piece right here. And then the rest of it that's connected to it is the HR2 uh, attachment. So how you do this is you simply buy the 70 inch posts when you select the HR2 uh, when you go to check out. I get this question all the time, so I wanna make that very clear. It's the SML1 with the HR2 attachment with the 70 inch posts uh, selected on the checkout because the floor, uh, the floor base is two inches. So the other posts you get, I think they're 72 inches, right? So you want the 70 inch post if you're working within the same kind of uh, spacing that I am. Now the, the spotter arms, the pins, the J cups, all that comes separately. So you have to buy all those. Um, the J cups here. Now these are not the, I, I believe there's a standard set of J cups that come with the rack. I went with the sandwich J cups. I think they were a hundred bucks and you can't beat the quality for the price. Um, you know, you can beat the absolute hell out of these things and they're not going to scratch your bar. The problem with the, with the J cups that it comes with, uh, I'll see if I can find them. I have them over here. Well, anyways, the, the problem is, or I've got them on the belt squad, that's why. The problem is the J-Cups that it comes with, they don't have any plastic. So they don't have any plastic, chews up the nerve on your bar. You don't want that. If you spend a lot of money on a bar, you don't want it all chewed up by J-Cups. So that's the rack setup. The only other different thing that I got is the uh, is the cross member. Now, it's it's been a while since I, I got this. Um, I just wanted something skinny that would fit um, fit across the rack because if you don't have this, um, and especially if you don't have plate storage as well, I would definitely recommend that. The rack is very shaky if you don't have those things. So the plate storage combined with the cross member, that's really going to firm up your rack. And it's still going to, you know, wobble and slide and go back and forth. I mean, it's not bolted into the ground, but that's definitely going to help. And I'd recommend doing either one or both of those things for sure. So next up, uh, I also have technically another rack over here. So this is the strong arm uh, competition uh, bench press or combo rack. And I love this thing. This is the most comfortable bench press. Yes, it's over the top. Yes, I could simply just use the bench piece, put it in there, 200 bucks, away you go. Um, I love this because, the, at least for me, the workouts I do, um, I do a lot of squatting and benching. Typically every workout I'm either squatting or benching. So... It's nice to not have to move stuff around. It's like my bench setup is right here. It's always ready to go. My squat setup is right there, always ready to go. Um, this bench is extremely comfortable. I come from a powerlifting gym, so um, I've used a lot of the really high-end Rogue equipment. I've used, um, you know, their full-on rack series with the, um, <clears throat> what do you call them? The, the monolift, uh, like, attachments. Uh, I've used the uh, the West Side competition benches with the fat pads. 
I don't like those. I think those are made for either, you know, and I'm a pretty large person myself. I'm six foot one, 230 pounds. And I felt tiny on those Thompson fat pad benches. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I love this bench. It, it's super grippy. Uh, I feel strong on it. I feel super stable. Um, I never feel like I'm, I'm at risk of pinning myself. The, the safety arms on it are amazing. Um, it's just really solid. It's really well. And the price is on point. I think I got it for like $950. I think it's closer to 1200 now with all the COVID economy, steel prices and prices of it, just everything in general going up. Uh, they did, they do actually run a sale on this every now and then strong arm sport or bells of steel. So if you're interested and keep a look at there, sometimes they drop it down to under a thousand. So, um, but yeah, I love it. You can't beat it. It does have plate storage. It's got band pegs. It's got everything that you would want in a standalone bench press unit. Um, I have on the wall back there the Rogue uh, band attachment thing, and it's kind of just like everything just kind of ends up on there. I've got like some blood flow restriction things that I've used like two times and um, all my West Side bands, an old belt. Uh, I did do the coupe thing where before you put it on, you stick the, um, what tape is that? The foil tape or the duct tape um, behind it and just tape it over. I've actually done that over here too. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys this in the video, but um, looks kind of cool. I don't know. It gets kind of dirty after a while, so I think you should probably replace it every now and then. But over here, we've got a uh, chalk bowl. Always wanted a chalk bowl, just because I like to pretend I'm LeBron James when I come down in here and I've got, you know, 50,000 people watch me. I throw the chalk in the air. <sighs> um, no, but it is nice to just have it there. And it's, you know, you can get rack mounted ones, but I find um, with the half rack, I'm a little bit limited for space on it for extra stuff. Whoa! And it's also kind of a, a pain to swap things out all the time. So I wanted a standalone, standalone unit. Um, I do typically use a lot of chalk um, until that is I got this barbell right here. So this is the American Barbell. I think one of the most slept on gym equipment companies probably in the world is American Barbell. They, they put out some extremely high quality stuff. And the more, the longer I've had this bar, the more I've really uh, grown to like it. It's got, it's just got a really clean stainless steel look to it. It's got the chrome sleeves with as quiet of, uh, quiet of a sleeve as you can get. And what I have noticed is the, some of you might have remembered my video about the, the sleeves being too noisy. That's actually become less of a problem over time as I grind them down um, by using the plates on them. Here, I'll show you. So it's still not, you know, it's still kind of annoying, but It's definitely gotten better with time, so shout out to um, American Barbell for putting the chicken uh, on that one. But um, yep, yeah, so next up, we'll go over here. And one of these two items is a mistake. They're both from Bells of Steel. <clears throat> First is the belt squat. And I got to say, for the, for the price of the belt squat, it's got so many uses. If I'm working out with someone else down here, for example, they can do a full workout on the belt squat. They can do anything from... Um, triceps, they can do arms, you can do curls with it, you can do back, you can do rows. Obviously, you can squat on it, you can deadlift on it, you can use bands, you can use plates. Um, I've actually hooked up a pulley into the ceiling. So um, you see right here, and that just simply hooks down into the, um, into the, uh, into the clip here. And then it spins over the pulley and you have like an unlimited amount of weight for a lat pull down or tricep movements or arms or literally anything that you would want to do on a high pulley. After oh, I just stepped on the band pick. Um, yeah, and then over here I have the Bells of Steel plyometric uh, box. Now, I initially bought this because I thought I was going to be able to do box squats off it. It's too high, um, but it makes a nice table. So, um, yeah. Now, I, I do use it sometimes with belt squats if I really want to isolate my quads and say my back's feeling a little bit beat up. Yes, the belt squat does take your back out of the movement pretty well, but um, you just get a nice quad pump, I find, when you, uh, which is hard to do in a home gym when you don't have all the special machines and stuff, right? So you have to get creative with things like that. But I find the two of them together, they work really well. Uh, over here, I've got the Matador uh, dip attachment. This does work in my setup. It is a little clunky, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I can do it. It's just, I just don't use it that much because I got messed up shoulders and I find they hurt sometimes, but, um, whenever I get back into shape, drop like 40, 
50 pounds or so. Um, then we're gonna get back into dips and it won't be as stressful on the chicken's joints. And then over here, I've got my, uh, one, of my one of my favorite machines. Um, this is a bicep, tricep, plate loaded um, curl press down machine. And it's just really nice because I mean, you can sit down, you can watch TV, you can do your curls. It's got a pin over there that you switch it and then it stops going the other way and you can do your press downs. So it's just a, a really simple, cheap, not super over, you know, not super high quality build or anything like that, but it works. And it was like 250 bucks, I think, um, shipped to my door. So you can't really beat that. And it's nice just to have something to switch it up if you're doing arms. I mean, you don't want to, like it gets boring and it's, uh, you know, you hurt your joints doing barbells, uh, like for every single movement. Like the last thing you want to do is go from, not the last thing, but you know, it's nice just to change it up a bit, like to go from, uh, you know, barbell squatting to barbell benching to then doing like curls with the barbell and like tricep thing or whatever you're doing with the barbell rows with the barbell. Like it's just, it's too much barbell at some point. So it's nice to have little stuff like that that doesn't break the bank. And, um, you know, I think the accessory equipment, like things like that, that's worth the gamble on. That's worth, you know, uh, I don't know if this is going to be really good or if it's going to suck. Um, because I mean, at the end of the day, you want to put your money into the, um, into the barbell related stuff, the rack, the plates, um, the bar itself, you know, that's going to keep you safe. That's what you really need to exercise. The rest of it is just kind of fun. So, um, I also have some deadlift blocks over here. I did just make those. I got a whole video on how I did it. Um, it was super easy. It was very cheap. I think for, oh, I don't know, $25, $40 maybe of two by fours and a little piece of mat on the top and some plywood I had lying around. Um, yeah, it was basically just a box with the two, two pieces on the side and then some rubber across the top to protect the plates. And yeah, you can make them, you know, you can make them higher or lower depending on um, how many sheets of plywood you cut. So that was very easy. I'm looking around to see if I have anything else. I have this mat over here um, because I did get rid of most of my um, horse stall mats. So I wanted something that was just soft that I could lie down on if I was doing, um, you know, crunches, planks, push-ups, um, just something to get off the platform, off the floor, and just something that was comfortable to, or for stretching at the beginning uh, of the workout or at the end or whatever you want to do your stretching. Um, it's nice to not lie on the, the cold foundation floor, but um, yeah, that's pretty well everything. I didn't talk about the plates. I've got the uh, Rogue Machined Olympic plates. They're beautiful. I mean, plates are plates. Uh, it's just personal preference. Uh, as long as they're somewhat accurate, then you'll be okay. Um, and I got some chains behind there. And I think that's pretty well everything. So, yeah. What I want to get next... This is going to be a long video. But I want to get... Obviously, high on my list is like, you know, a functional trainer would be awesome. But the space that I have, it doesn't really make sense. And it's very hard to find something that would work. So I'm looking at like a single stack pulley kind of thing. I'd love to get some kind of chest press or something that has like a neutral grip because my shoulders are really killing me lately. Um, so just to have that option to be able to take the pressure off, I might get a, a Swiss bar or something like that too. But um, yeah, those are the two big things for right now. I'd also love to get like a leg extension curl machine because um, I find it's hard to hit the quads directly and it's hard to hit the, the hamstrings directly. Obviously you can do, you know, your good mornings, deadlifts and your squats, and that's going to be the, the bulk of what you need. But, um, yeah, just some things that would be nice to have. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section as always. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to subscribe to the channel, if you like home gym stuff, then make sure you stay tuned. We got some big stuff coming over the, the next year or so. We're just getting things started here. I just wanted to see, you know, I started this channel just to see if there's going to be interest and clearly there is. Um, so yeah, big things to come. If you guys want to subscribe, um, you know, there's a lot of home gym things uh, coming this year. We got reviews, we got announcements, we got, you know, some training stuff, uh, hopefully a nice transformation uh, for chicken this spring. I'll look like a whole different um, chicken once we kind of thin out a little bit, or maybe I'll get even fatter. Who knows? That would be entertaining, right? So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is going to wrap up for the video today. Make sure to leave a like if you found it interesting, entertaining, or informative. Catch the next one, guys. Chicken out. Back, back, back.